Uh, hello and uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you once again for logging in and being here on time. You are indeed uh, faithful stewards, faithful stewards, depending on your English teacher. I want to welcome you again tonight as we proceed with uh, uh, lessons. And I hope yesterday we took time to reflect on what we were taught. Now, uh, Bruce Lee once said, uh, I'll quote him, I don't fear somebody who has practiced 10,000 different kicks. He says, I fear one who has practiced one kick 10,000 times. And I wish we could put in the proverbial uh, 100,000, whatever, 10,000 hours so that we master everything that we're learning on a daily basis. I'm going to pray make announcements, and then we will proceed. Father, we come before the throne this evening. We thank you for yet another day. We went out on different errands. You brought us back on this platform, a virtual platform, connecting from many different points. And we know that your spirit reaches out to all of us. We hope that and pray you bless the labor of May. You give us, again, concentration for tonight. Bless our speaker for tonight. Bless our leadership. Bless every member. Those that are yet to log in, may they be here on time as well. We thank you because you've heard and answered this prayer. Because we are praying in Jesus' blessed name. Amen. I'm going to introduce our speaker for tonight, and I'll make announcements at the end when everybody is in. Speaker for tonight is uh, Luzogom Huebo, who is a professional educator, profession, who is an educated professional with expertise in economics, business administration, and financial markets. He's a dean of the Faculty of Business held at the College of Higher Education on Christian Financial eight books, including two translations. Good job there, Elder Luzugo, with three. Centered on personal finance management, financial economics, and he's married with two children, a daughter, and a son. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Thank you so much, uh, Babu Luzungu. Luzungu, to us through my leader. The floor is all yours. Or is it a stage? Over to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, my elder, for the introduction. Um, I am not going to waste any time. Um, I will begin by reading the word of God before we um, delve into our presentation this evening. Um, can I get an indication? Am I audible? Yes, we're able to hear you, sir, and we're able to see the screen. Loud and clear. Very loud and clear. All right, thank you so much. I want to read a passage um, from the book of Luke, chapter 14. I'm going to read verse 28 and verse 28 to verse 30. Luke, chapter 14, verse 28 to 30. I believe it's a, it's a familiar text uh, to many of us. It reads as follows. For which of you wanting to build a tower doesn't first sit down and calculate the cost to see if he has enough to complete it? Other version will say um, to see if you have enough money to complete it. Verse 29 says, otherwise, after he has laid the foundation and cannot finish it, all the onlookers will begin to make fun of him, saying, 
this man started to build and wasn't able to finish. I'm not going to preach, um, but I think as Bible students, you can get the principle uh, from this passage. Um, these are the words from Jesus Christ. Maybe before we start, I will also just uh, pray very short so that you can invite the Lord and help us so that we can be able to um, understand the message this evening. Let me pray. Our kindly Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. Thank you for gathering us in this platform. Uh, may you be with us as I am going to be presenting on this subject of personal financial management. I pray that you may be with me in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, firstly, let me thank the, the leadership for allowing um, me to present in this platform. Um, as you have heard from the introduction, uh, my name is Luzu Gomkhwebo. I know most people are actually struggling to pronounce my, my surname. And those who understand um, my language, is a closer. you could tell actually that I am following my surname because my surname is Mkhwebo. You know, I studied economics, so that's, that's what I love. And I now presenting about money. So not that I have money, <laughs> But I, 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 I am passionate about this subject of personal financial management. I so wish that uh, people can be serious with their finances. We will see the difference in our churches. All right. So I'll be presenting on this subject, personal financial management. Um, I'm trying to see my... My, my my device is afraid. okay no it's fine how we just use the the it's not moving for some reason okay yes so as you can see on this screen i will try to i know i talk fast because i think i have a lot of information in my head so i'll try to contain myself this evening um most of us in the house i know that we have people who are not who are unemployed um, for some reason that are beyond their own control. But if you are earning an income, uh, I'll try to simplify this. I know I can be complicated uh, on this subject, but that is not my intention. Um, so my interest is that we can simplify the concept of personal financial management so that we can understand that it's not for people who are sophisticated, people who have money, uh, but everyone actually is affected by the issues around money. So if you are earning an income, there are five things that you can do with money. One, ideally, yes, we have to give. We have, we have to give. With your money, you have to give. I think it's a biblical principle, giving. So I, I always say to people when I go and present about this subject of money, I am not going to present as if I'm coming from a financial institution. I can do that. I worked in the stock market in Sentin in 2013 and 14. I also worked as a financial planner at some point in my life before I joined Heldabek College. So I can, I can come up with those complicated financial terms and terminology, but that is not my intention. I don't want to confuse people. Um, the purpose is that we need to help families to manage money better. And at the end of the day, so that we can actually be of use in the church of God. That is my intention. So you earn an income, you can you give, you pay tax. I know we are complaining about taxes, They're like, oh, paying tax. But the fact that you are actually paying tax, it's a, it shows that you have a blessing of an income. I know some people are... Uh, this is not making sure this thing of it tax. But anyway, so you give the pay tax and then you deal with your living expenses. And those who have debt, uh, you service your debt, short-term debt. And then the fifth component is invest and save, which is very important. I must say that most of us actually, we are struggling with 
managing our expenses. You know, the component about living expense. And, and, and most of us, we have too much debt, uh, unsecured loans, you know, paying high interest. And we are struggling. And then um, we are struggling also with the concept of giving. So I, I want us to understand that when it comes to personal financial management, uh, I know the the my 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 training is in economics. I did finance. I studied financial markets. So they they teach the subject of financial management differently. But from the 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 perspective of the Bible, it should differ. It should differ, I believe, because the Bible is teaching us something differently from what we are learning from the textbook. I'm the lecturer. I taught economics since 2015. As a lecturer, so I I'm, I'm saying this because I have studied this concept and also I know how it is presented in the textbook. So because this is this is we are we are actually living for the kingdom of God. We need to do things differently. Now we are struggling with giving. We are struggling even with investing and saving. And I can tell you that most of our income in South Africa particularly, I'm not going to bring all the statistics. I can do that, but I don't have time. So the living expenses, I think I can say that most South Africans are living beyond their income. Okay. So the, the majority or the, the large portion of their income, it goes to the living expenses and debt actually. All right. But what I'm trying to say here is that if you earn an income just to lay a foundation, we must understand that especially as a Christian, we must balance this thing. So if you forget everything that I'm going to say, so when it comes to personal financial management, especially from the from the from the from the perspective of the Bible, giving it's part of that, and actually the Bible requires us to pay back the loans that we have to, we have taken. So when it comes to invest and save, we talk about long term goals. Uh, we have retirement. Um, in the long run, okay, family needs in the long run, and you also want to maximize giving, and also maybe your lifestyle desires, you know, um, or you want to start a business. If you listen to Yanga yesterday about entrepreneurship, I was I was actually part of the of the attendance at, attendee. At, yes, I was attending yesterday, um, listening to Yanga, and also people want to retire debt free, but it's, it's so unfortunate that most South Africans actually when they retire. They want to go back because they were not able to manage their finances while they were working. Okay. Um, what I can say is that we know that the government of South Africa recently has introduced what is called report system. <laughs> it's so interesting because we have a crisis in families. We have a crisis in families that the government um, took a decision to say, how do we <laughs> force people to save? <laughs> let's 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 change. The, the the regulations in the in the, in the pension uh, space so that people can actually be forced to save and that is very interesting you know we are not supposed the government was not supposed to do that um all right so let me read this statement from Ellen White to also just give a perspective um, because I'm a firm believer of the spirit of prophets and actually is these principles that I've learned from the spirit of prophets that taught me um personal financial management and Ellen White says, many, very many, have not so educated themselves that they keep their expenditure, expenditures within the limit of their income. This statement is, is profound. If you, if you can sit down and, 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 and try to understand what, what Ellen White is saying here, people have written papers, you know, there are books now that have been written on personal financial management. They are actually trying to explain this principle, most of them. And, and it has been written a long time ago by, by Ellen White, and she says that we, we, we are not educated to keep our expenditures within the limit of the income. You know, there's a, there's a, there's a guy that I follow, uh, Dave Ramsey, I think most of you might be familiar with that name. He said something interesting that we buy things we don't have. Sorry, we, we buy things with the money we don't have to impress people that we don't like. Maybe let me repeat. He, he says, we buy things we don't need with the money we don't have, yes, to impress people we don't like. And as a result of that pressure, we tend to spend 
or spend beyond our income. So Ellen White is counseling that many people have not educated themselves to, to keep their expenditure within the limit of their income. They do not learn to adapt themselves to circumstances. They borrow. Listen, these are the consequences of living beyond your means. <laughs> because if you live beyond your means, it that's like at the macroeconomic level, even the government of South Africa, for an example, when they project how much they're going to spend in the next financial year, they will say, okay, we are expecting to collect so much, but our expenditure is so high. And how do we finance that deficit? Through borrowing. That's what the government is doing, um, the Minister of Finance. So even at a micro level in our homes, we do that, actually. That we, we want more things, but our income does not allow. And for us to consume at the level that we want to consume, we tend to take debt so that we can actually service that deficit, okay? That's what Illinois is saying, that people, they borrow and borrow again and again and become overwhelmed in debt and consequently, and they become discouraged and disheartened. So I'm trying to just lay a foundation. I'll run through the principles that I, I, I believe that if we can take them serious as God's people, um, as the ambassadors of the kingdom of God, I'm telling you, you will actually cruise when it comes to personal financial management. I am saying this as someone who was once in debt. <laughs> I know how to be in debt. I know how to struggle to pay debt. But I believe God actually allowed that, situ that, that, that situation in my life so that I can actually teach others. So I can safely say today that uh, in my family, we don't have any form of debt. Uh, we are debt free. The reason we are debt free is the principles that I'm going to say this evening. Okay. I am confident because they are working and I have seen them in our family transforming how we are running our family, especially married people. So there is that financial intimacy at home so that you don't fight all the time. At the same time, you are winning on things that matter, especially finances. So just, just run through this article, just run through these articles um, to see that we have a challenge in the country, uh, that too many South Africans are slaves to debt. I'm not talking about debt today, but debt, I normally use it as an index, sort of a thermometer of maybe like measuring that, okay, the situation in the finances are bad, especially if you're sinking in debt. So it's, it's, that, it's that's a symptom. The debt is a symptom. So the root cause is that people, they need to change the mindset um, to sh the, the mindset so that they can actually start to work on their finances. South Africans are getting poorer, using debt to live. This is These are headlines on the newspapers that you know. South African households are getting poorer while the cost of living uh, continues to rise. South Africa's middle class, there's a crisis there in middle class, has a debt, a massive debt problem. South Africa is plagued by personal debt. Most South Africans rely on debt to make it through the month, which is very interesting. And one of the <laughs> the lines in those articles, um, it says that many South Africans, if they were to be given an opportunity to get their income just after a week of being paid, they were, are going to take that opportunity. That's how that's how people are pressed uh, when it comes to their finances. Um, this one, just to go through this one, this is a recent article this year, 2024. It talks about people who are earning about 35,000. They say that on average, these people, they have a debt, uh, a debt to income ratio of about 172%, meaning if they earn one rent, 100, 100, 170, if they earn one rent, 172, it's, 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 it's debt. So meaning that their debt, it's more than their income. Those are people that are struggling. Actually, I've met people who have called me telling me that they are struggling because their debt is almost equal to the income that they get. So those people who would sit down and try to structure on how we can actually uh, deal with the problem that they have. So it, it, it boils down to how you manage your money. Um, especially if you reach a point that your debt is so high uh, that you can't even keep up. And some people actually they in, end up committing suicide because they can't they can't keep they can't they can't <laughs> absorb the pressure of being overwhelmed in debt. And most South Africans actually they use 
a large portion of their income to service debt. And it's a serious, it's a crisis. I am, I'm seeing, I'm saying it is a crisis and actually even in the church of God. And that's, that's, that tell me that for me, when I analyze the situation and especially as Christian, if you are also part of the statistics, it gives me an answer to say, this is the reason, one of the reasons why church members are unable to return faithful tithe. Because if you are earning 10,000 and 70% of your income is service debt, so already 70% goes to debt, you are left with 3,000. So you have to use that money actually to, to, to buy food and transport. So there's is, there is no room for tithe. And the first item on the budget line that is removed most households in South Africa, okay, let me say in, in, in the SDHH, they take out tithe because they are overwhelmed. So they were not able to prioritize. They got too excited when they earn income. And as a statement that I was mentioning that we tend to buy things we don't need with the money we don't have to impress people we don't like. And as a result, there are consequences of that. So the presentation today is to just to get into your mind so that you can think about the seriousness of uh, being ill-disciplined until it comes to your monies, okay? Because money actually is so serious to God. He wants us to have control over money, not money to have control over us. All right, so let's, let me just um, leave this article. I was just trying to show you that it is important for us as people, as households, to manage and so that we don't get into that problem. So there are various definitions when it comes to personal financial management. So they use financial literacy, they use financial capability, they use financial well-being. I'm not going to dwell much on this um, because it's going to take time. It's more on an academic level. So, you know, Financial Service Board now is called FSCA, uh, Financial Service Conduct Authority. So it has this definition about financial literacy, your ability to under understand finance and your financial capability, your the people's knowledge and skills to understand their own financial circumstances and your financial well-being is a state of being uh, when a person can fully can fully meet current and ongoing financial obligation. So the first one is more about your ability to understand, but the second one, capability, it's when you have skills and you can be able to be motivated and you can take action and you can plan ahead and find and use information. So you know when to seek advice and also can understand and act on that advice. So that is financial capability. Then that results to a financial well-being, which is the state of being, meaning that you can meet your current and ongoing financial obligation and you have a secured future. All right. So it's important that we understand that. I was going to play this video. I don't know. Let me check the time uh, so that I, yeah, I think let me play it's just two minutes. I Can you just bear with me, I want to just play this 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 video. Um, because I'm trying to simplify this thing. I don't want to assume that everyone in the house is is um, understand this financial concept. Hey, so I'm on condition. Let's come sit to the the Malaka range and for fish. And then some of them walk. Yep, and James Bill is a good well, yeah, I can see that. But understanding needs and wants help me budget better. So at least I'm not starving in expensive clothes. Plus, I've saved enough to buy a car in a two months. My priorities are straight. Ah, uh, uh, so, 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 you know, smart planning has its downside sometimes. Yeah, but I mean, it is what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, exactly. Knowing the difference between needs and wants is the first step to smart planning and budgeting. Count your brother. You don't need planning and budgeting. Where's the door? You can't move on here. I'm not going to take you on video. Where is it? Oh, such a bad man. I started in trouble because no one has no money. It's a pro. For this is too late anymore. Do brother, how come they get to? Bro, needs, needs they are the essentials. So, shelter, 
That lunch is not close. But the question is, it tomorrow get born? Nope. Only just close so you don't freeze to death, you know? So once I have a soft life, you know, the things like expensive gifts, soccer tickets, golf ball, you can go all your way. So then do a smart planning. Is also some nap over and use the short term goals, the medium term goals, the long term goals. When I know, tell me more, do obtain you, your coaching and ban, sending hand up a cup. A little stop, get shut up. Calm down, calm down, calm down. You need to structure these goals. They need to be specific, achievable, realistic. And you do that by budgeting. And that's how you make it work. Hang on, do you have a new other stable in your budgeting? Because Paul, when they would get it and get budgeting, the same thing is CEO in his office. Okay. I think let me pause it. All right. So, what, what this video actually is trying to tell us is that uh, we need to understand the importance of planning, you know, talk about having short-term, medium, and long-term goals. I, I think I will touch on those things uh, because it speaks to planning. So when I touch about financial planning, so I think I'll talk about that. So I, I hope, I know it's it's in this toss, and I hope you were able to see the, the subtitles there. But what the video actually is trying to say is that we need to have priorities when it comes to personal financial management. Um, I wanted to show you the opportunity cost of not managing your money well. Opportunity cost means that what are you forfeiting um, when you take a particular decision? So for example, if I were to put my money and invest it, what am I missing when it comes to deciding that I save this money? Or what am I missing if I decide not to save money and spend it on budget and other things? So there's an opportunity cost, it's an economic term, finance term. So so if you if you have a credit card of about five thousand, I'm not talking about debt today, but I'm just just laying um, a good financial principles. Because the verse that we read when we we began, it talks about being intentional, sit down, calculate the cost. So if you have a uh, uh, if you have a credit card of about five thousand five hundred and sixty, so roughly, especially if it's at eighteen percent interest, which is more a conservative figure because interest rate of a credit card can actually <laughs> go to 21%. So you can actually pay a thousand rand in interest only per year, all right? Without fully, I can, I can guarantee you, if they say just pay 100 rand bare minimum a month on that credit card, at the end of the year, you will pay about 36 rands towards the principal amount. And then the rest, the thousand rand will be on interest. So if you, run through with that credit card for many years, you will notice that the, the thousand rand that you pay over 40 years, you can pay about 40,000 on a credit card of 5,560, which is which is something crazy. It's, it seems like impossible, but try it. You will see the, the, the implication. So if you were to take that thousand rand that you, were, you are paying on a credit card, instead of paying it on a credit card or having a credit card and invest it, let's say you are lucky to get an investment of about 12%, all right? I'm not selling anything here. I'm not guaranteeing anything, but I'm saying hypothetically, let's say you have an, which is more <laughs> reasonable figure, 12%, 1,000 rand. So I'm telling you, after 40 years of saving 1,000 rand every year, I'm not talking about every month, every year, after 40 years, that at 12% interest, it will actually yield to... 859,142 rand 39 cents. And interest actually of that, it's 819,142. That is an interest. I hope that makes sense. You can try actually in Google this and put some, there are actually calculators or on Google. I've tried to try to make sure that I get my facts right. So what, 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 what you see here is that it's an opportunity cost and someone is paying 1,000 rand every year on a credit card, buying things that they forget, and this other person decide to invest this money. So same 1,000 rand, it can do a lot in 40 years time. I know some people say, oh, I, don't, I don't want to wait 40 years. Okay, we are actually, um, the Bible counsels us to leave um, something for the next generation. So it's important that we invest, all right? So it's even worse if the investment it's 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 yielding about eighteen percent annual. So I'm not saying I'm not guaranteeing anything, 
okay i'm saying that if it happens i know some people actually who invest in stock market i once was in the stock market you know the, the the returns they are ridiculous but i must say that also the risk is high so some people lose money there what i'm trying to say here is that you can miss a lot from just one decision that you make because you want to certify a temporal um, um to gratify self now and then you miss out on an opportunity for example after 20 years you would have up to 80 80000 after 30 years about 270000 so what i'm trying to say um, with this illustration here is that we need to prioritize all right so when it comes to personal financial management especially from a kingdom perspective is that we need to first pray especially those who are overwhelmed dead pray confess your sins confess that you are unable to manage your money and if you don't have savings and still you need to pray lord i want to start a journey of building savings i want to start a journey of building investments all right so what i'm trying to say is that you need to pray that's the first thing that you need to do pray we've done that at home as i've just mentioned to you that in our house we don't we don't have debt you know we it's it's so nice when you deal with your investments first and then uh, you spend it, you spend nicely when you you invested your investments are okay okay so but you need to pray you must involve god in the process i'm telling you that it's going to uh, be positive in your life and then the second thing that i want us to talk about is this concept called budget and and we we underestimate budget i know it sounds so simple um i'm telling you for someone who studied uh, financial markets, all the complicated financial terms, uh, who studied debt market, equity market, derivative market, all these complicated things, you know, those things that did not help me, I must say, with masters in economics, but they did not help me to budget when it comes to my money. But when I started to read the simpler things, uh, they started to read uh, from from the from the Bible to say, this is this is what God has put on our table to say, hear my word, learn from it. So I started to learn about how to budget. And I must say that even, even today, for an example, uh, when it comes to my budget, I have visa slips you know, from the shop. A lot of them, this is this month. I keep them so that I can trace my expenditure. I don't just spend. So even if I buy a, 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 a loaf of bread, 15 rand, I have to go back to my spreadsheet and actually capture that, that I've, I've bought bread today so that I can see, but I'll talk about that. So you need to have a budget so that you can be able to manage your expenses. Uh, there is a guy called John Maxwell. John Maxwell says budget is telling money where to go instead of wondering where it went. And many of us, they don't know how they spend the 5,000 the past month, you know? So uh, it's important that we are able to manage our expenses. Hence, I'm showing you these slips. For me, uh, all the slips that I've used this month, I keep them so that I update, but I do it on a daily basis, especially when I go to the shop. Even this afternoon, I went to shop. So tonight, after this presentation, I'll go to my spreadsheet and put that I bought this and bought that. And then I will categorize because according to my budget. So we must be able to manage our expenses. And this is the best one, best tool that you can use to ensure that you are able to manage your expenses. Keep the slip. Don't don't forget forget about managing your money if you're gonna take the slip and just throw it on the bin. I know you say I'm gonna look at my bank statement in my app, but your app is not gonna tell you. For example, you buy something at clicks and you buy something that falls into the grocery and the, and the, and the cosmetics. So when you are looking at that money in transaction in your account, you are not going to be able to distinguish to say this is a cosmetic this is a grocer so this is for grocer so i'm able to see and and i am intentional so i go down and then each slip i circle to say this is for the cosmetics this one is for entertainment so it will go to the entertainment so you must be able to manage your expenses and be intentional i think that's the word that you need to take out from this presentation that you need to be intentional about your finances be deliberate and say that i am going to win manage your expenses and one of the things that I use um, is the envelope system. I use the envelope system, especially for some items like, like grocery, you know. And I must say, I wanted to share with you this, that I have noticed in my house that if I don't use the envelope system 
and that month I don't withdraw the money, I just swipe, swipe, swipe. We, sometimes we are unable to control the spending uh, that month. I've noticed many, many times. So as a result, I'm being very conservative and I am being strict when it comes to this envelope system. I make sure that I categorize. So week one, week two, week three, week four, so that if I finish week one, I don't go to week two un unless there's an emergency. So doing that, you are being intentional uh, so that you are you know what you have spent your money on, okay? And then another thing that is important when it comes to personal financial management is to list your assets. Whether you are in debt or you want to start savings, you must know your assets. Assets are the thing that give you money, all right? For example, if you're talking about pension that you are contributing to at work, that is your asset. If you have a paid out, paid out house, uh, you have a, that is your asset. And if your car is paid off, that is your asset. And if you have a rental property, the income that you are getting, you're getting money from that, that is your asset. And, and if you're talking about people who have livestock in the villages, those are assets. If you are to liquidate or you are to sell those cattle and you can get money from that, because it's gonna, it belongs to you. So you don't, you don't owe debt. So anything that you don't owe debt on, it's, it's, your, it's your asset, all right? And then it's important to know your asset because they will give you an indication where you are when it comes to financial position. That is very important. So if your financial position is calculated when you have listed your financial assets, meaning that everything that you own, and you talk about all the things that you owe, which is your liability. So if you minus your liabilities from your assets, so then that provides, that gives you a financial position. So most people actually in South Africa, they have more liabilities than assets. They have more debt than the assets that they own, the thing that generates money for them. And because South Africa is a country that is characterized by consumerism, because most people in South Africa are consuming. We are consumers. I know we are consumers. So when it comes to the concept of personal financial management, is not to say that people must not buy and spend and have fun and, and, and have good time. But we need to be responsible when it comes to our finances. Don't have too much liabilities compared to your assets. You are in trouble if you're like that. So uh, when, when I do this, uh, I calculate a family uh, financial net worth. I take the assets, you minus the liability. So if the assets are greater than the liabilities, if the things that you own are greater than the things that are you owe, you have a positive ne family net worth. All right. So if the liabilities are greater, then you have a negative. You are on the red. And most people actually are on the red. And, and, and the banks, unfortunately, they don't always um, know that people actually are on the red. Because when we go to the banks, we want a vehicle finance, we don't disclose everything. And, 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 and most of the time, Christians and Adventists don't even disclose that they are in tithe. As a result, they create a picture that, okay, they can afford whatever they want to buy, all right? And come reality, when you have to return tithe, then you don't have room to pay off whatever you have taken uh, using debt. So we need to understand that it is important that you sit down, as Christ said in Luke 14, verse 28, sit down, count the cost so that you can see if you are able to build this tower, okay? Don't just assume that, okay, I have, I have, I have credit, I have a debt in this company. How much is that debt? How much interest are you paying? And how long will it take you to pay off this debt? So it's important that you understand. Do you understand the implication of high interest rate and low interest rate in the economy? So those things that we need to understand as God's people because it catches up with us, okay? So and another thing that we need to understand, which is very important when it comes to personal financial management, it's a concept called financial plan. So a financial plan um, is when you put the information together about your assets, about your liabilities, you calculate your net worth, and, and over above that. So if you see that, okay, I have too many liabilities, for an example, or I have too many assets, okay, how do I maximize um, my finances with the assets that I have? So it gives you that picture. So some people, they don't even have that. They don't know their financial position. 
even when they meet with the financial advisors or financial planners or wealth managers uh, with the likes of Oyanga Duma. So oh, when, when Yanga ask you a question about your financial position, people don't know. They don't know. They really don't know what their financial position. And that is a crisis, I must say. So I'm here to appeal to everyone who's listening that when if you want to win when it comes to your finances, I'm saying this because I am the living testimony that and being intentional about your finances to have a plan and take a book, take a book. I still have a, a book where I listed all my assets and liabilities. And when I, I, I at the time I was owing a, um, a, a bank with, with the car that I'm driving now, which is now I have been driving it for the past eight years. So after learning financial principles, I said, I don't, it's, there's, there's no point of changing this car. It can take me from point A to point B. And I'm now able to invest actually instead of paying debt. So what I'm trying to say is that you need to take a book, all right? Cheap, you buy this thing and you call all the banks and say, how much do I owe? And how long will it take for me to pay off this? And if, for example, you have, you have cash, maybe you have bonus, and then you ask the bank, if I were to settle this loan, how, can you give me a discount? And most of the time, some banks will say, no, I can give you a discount. So I've done that. I will call financial institution because I'm being intentional. So part of the financial plan, you have the assets, your liabilities, you calculate your financial net worth, and then you list the goals, okay? And if you don't have debt at all, and the, the only thing that you want to do is to maximize giving, you want to build assets. So you can have short term to say, okay, in the next six months, what is it that I want to build when it comes to my assets? I want to make sure that my emergency fund, actually, it's enough to cover me for six months if I were to be laid off, to be retrenched, for an example. So you plan around that. So for someone who has debt, then you can actually have a plan. You have uh, goals to say, I want to pay off that credit card. I want to pay, pay off that student loan. I want to pay off that machonesa. I want to pay off... Um, that financial account. I want to pay off that friend because I've borrowed money from a friend. I want to pay off that cell phone account. So it's for someone who has a debt. So what I'm trying to say is that when it comes to personal financial management, you must write things down so that you can see them on the book. And if you don't, if you don't write things down, I'm telling you, you are not going to win when it comes to personal financial personal finances. Let me say this as a principle to say. When it comes to personal financial management, it is 80% behavior and 20% head knowledge. You know, the stuff that I'm actually pouring now in this presentation, it goes into your head. And maybe maybe you are you are hearing some things for the first time and you're excited, you are, I'm over the moon, tomorrow I'm going to pay off that thing. I have cash. I'm telling you that, you know, the 80%, which is behavioral, it can actually overpower what you know. That's what I've noticed. And that's why even in economics now, I'm starting to branch from the conventional, and put it that way, the known school of thought in economics that talks about that consumers or people are rational. But if you if you think about it, we are not as rational as we think we are. Um, and, and people know that I need to budget, but they don't budget because we are not as rational as we think we are rational. So what I'm trying to say is that the behavior must change if you want to win when it comes to personal financial management, 80% behavior contributes a lot when it comes to our finance, financial distress or financial successes. So if you if you if you if you if you absorb this information, so the, the, the most important part if you want to win is to ensure that your behavior is correct. Okay. Um I hope that 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 is that is clear. Okay. And then the other thing that I want to talk about, it's part of personal financial management. I'm saying this, it is informed by the statistics and the information that I read on the news. And also, I, I once attempted to do a PhD in financial literacy. You know the stuff that I read, the, the articles, people are actually overwhelmed in debt. That's why I'm so hard when it comes to debt, because I want people actually to enjoy life. I want Christians to enjoy life. I want preachers to enjoy life without worrying that when they are preaching, they're going to get a call from a debt collector. I want families to actually to be free to enjoy life without worrying to say, what if, what if, what if we need this financial freedom, okay? Uh, so we need to have actually to establish a debt payment schedule. I must say, friends, 
If you have borrowed, you must pay. Because the Bible in Psalms 37, verse 21, it says the wicked borrow and don't pay back, but the righteous give generously. So we must pay. So if you have debt, you must have a debt payment schedule and know that, okay, I'm going to start, for example, maybe you say, I'm going to start with, a, with, with start off with small debts so that I can actually get confident, you know? Um, some, sometimes if you start with the larger one, which some people actually are, are proposing that start with the with the with the greater debt or the for me it, it it gives that boost to say I've paid a debt. I remember when we started with my wife, we it was four hundred rands. I think it was Mr. Price. When we paid that, it was a short term goal, part of our financial plan to say in one month we are going to pay this Mr. Price four hundred rands. When we paid it, we celebrated. It was an achievement. So it it actually say we can do this thing. Actually, okay, all right, and then. I must say that also if you are struggling, especially when it comes to debt, consider I'm 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 trying to see the time now as I'm presenting because um yeah, I think in 10 minutes I'll be able to, to conclude. So consider it additional income. I think Ilyanga talked about entrepreneurship yesterday. Maybe that's a different concept, but if you are able without compromising the principles, uh, your principles as a Christian, without actually um, compromising your the family time. Try an additional income so that you can sort this thing. It's a short term, um, short term measure so that you can deal with your finances. Okay, and don't pressure yourself if you don't have debt. Um, yes, I know that we need to be ambitious. You want to earn more. You want to build wealth. But let's do it within the confines of king of godly principles and also the kingdom principles, so that we don't we don't we don't pass wealth. To the, to, at the expense of our families and our children, and they don't see us for for, for six months because we are in this uh, pursuit of, of wealth, gener wealth generation. Um, so it's important that we understand that God also is, is looking down at us in how we are handling money, okay? And then I must advise people that, especially if you are in debt, and especially if you want to build savings and investment, accumulate no new debt. Okay, because if you accumulate more debt, the savings that you have put in place, I'm telling you, you're gonna go down, go, go go there and dip into those savings. Actually, that informs why the government introduced two port system. Because when people are leaving employment, they just take their pension instead of preserving it. So they take their pension and consume it. They don't even do something tangible, they just consume and buy things that are perishing. So it's important that we understand that we need to to win in this matter so that we can be, we can provide for our families. Not only our families, we can actually assist the church of God. You know, in our budget, we, we recently actually increased an item, it's called poor fund in our budget, because it's in stages, these things, okay? When we were in debt with my wife, we, yes, we said, okay, it's a godly principle to give, even if we're in debt, okay? So, but we're just giving, but now that we are debt free, we are able to increase that money because we have a purpose to say a personal financial management and trying to deal with our finances at home. It's not only about us, but also because we are called by God to do something. Because the Bible says that there will always be poor, poor people amongst you. Open your hand wide to those who are in need. Okay. And and another principle. Um, before I get to things that are a bit more complicated, but I'll try to make them simple. Uh, we need to be content. You know, if you are not content, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you are going to struggle when it comes to, to finances. And I must say, with the, with, the, with the point that I've made about giving, there's a girl called Randy Alcorn. He says that most of us, we think that God is increasing our income so that we can increase the standard of living. But God wants us to increase the standard of giving. Let me repeat that. God has not increased our income or our earnings so that we can increase our standard of living, but he has increased our income so that we can increase the standard of giving. You'll see God's blessings. And I'm saying this because it is a, I, I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I, I have a testimony. For that. I am the witness of God's message, of allowing him to work in my life so that I can manage his money, his way, because this is his money. He he owns this money that he has given me. So as a result, I have to be a good steward and know that I am responsible. I'm accountable to him. All right. 
And then the last point I can say that we need to consider, actually we need to consider a radical change in our lifestyle. Some people, they don't want to change the lifestyle. People, <laughs> for the sake of content, for the sake of social media content, people, they don't want to adjust their lifestyle, which is something crazy when you can see that the state is suffering and you also are suffering psychologically. But because you are holding on on this um, false image that people actually have, you, you have portrayed yourself to the world that you actually, you are the goals, but you know that you are suffering. So when it comes to personal financial management, and I think I, I, I like this part of, of, of radical change. And, and, and I've seen it because it contributes in, in the change in your finances. And when you make decision to say, I don't care what people think, you know, I wrote a book, it's called Free, Free Yourself from People's Expectation. So I operate with that mindset of freeing yourself from, from people's expectation. Because I remember, let me give an example. I always share this with people. When we are dealing with our finances with my wife, we decided one time to say, you know what, uh, it's COVID. Why are we, why, 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 why do we rent 6,000 when we can go and stay with my wife's grandmother. I know in my culture, it's a taboo, taboo thing to say, as a man, you go and stay with your wife's grandmother. So it was, I'm not staying with her now. It's been more than four years actually not staying with her, but it was just a temporary measure to deal with certain things in our budget, in our finances. And actually we are able to achieve. And part of changing a lifestyle and Friends, <laughs> I must say, I was saying, I was saying, I was telling my wife today, yesterday, actually, to say, I think I'm proud of myself that this year I've only I've only bought one clothing item, one trouser, because I wanted to achieve some financial goals, which I've done, and and I'm I'm not dead, I'm still living, and I'm gonna go back and buy those clothes, you know. So waiting, it's very important. So I decided to say, okay, this year I have some financial goals that I want to meet. So let me let me be radical about it. I have clothes. You know, it's not that I don't have clothes. I'll I'll wear the old ones. Okay. So I've done that and, and I've sacrificed. And there were sometimes when you are invited to go and, and present someone, like if I can buy maybe a suit, a nice shirt, then I said not I can I can I can I can do it later. All right. So I'm finishing now. Um so what I'm trying to say is that. We need to be intentional when it comes to our finances and, and be able to make some lifestyle adjustment so that we can manage. Remember the statement from Ellen White that so many people have not educated themselves that they can keep their expenditures within the limit of their income, which is a powerful principle that we need to live by as, as God's people. All right. So maybe just to touch on this one, um, uh, maybe I'll touch on this one maybe when I am dealing with questions and answers. So I'm, I'm, I'm really closing now. So with, with, with this one, which called emergency fund, this is, this is something that people need to have. An emergency fund is very important. So for example, uh, yesterday, uh, this weekend, my wife's phone, um, it went blank. But we are not that worried because we have an emergency fund. We've got to fix that screen. Yes, it was not part of the budget, but there's an emergency fund because it will rain. It's important. And those who are actually in, 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 um, impacted by the two-port system, I want to say, don't relax. In as much as the government says, you, they are, you, are, you will be able to access one-third, that one-third that you're contributing towards your pension, once in a tax year. I want to say, build an emergency fund that runs parallel to that. Because I'm saying this, you are only able to access that money once in a tax year. So what if the emergency comes three times in the tax year? So you have an emergency and you take deep into that one third and then you deal with that emergency. And then what if something happens after that? So what I'm trying to say is that the one for the government is not that liquid if you talk about finance term. So, but if you are able to build an emergency fund that runs parallel to that one, I'm telling you, you're going to win. I think I must end on that on that note, my my elder. Um, just to summarize on what I have just 
uh, presented. Um, we need to create systems as families, as God's people, because if you don't have systems, if you don't have something that you can actually see that, okay, I have a plan, I want to achieve this and that, then you are not going to win when it comes to finances. So the gist of personal financial management is that you invest in knowledge, you read books, you understand finances so that you can make informed decisions, so that you can make better decisions so that you can actually create a better future for yourself and for your family and also contribute towards advancing the kingdom of God. I think that is a holistic personal financial management. So if it only feeds you, if it only satisfies you, so you have missed the point as a Christian, I must say, I must be, I must be frank on that one. So it must be holistic because um, we have been given these resources by God and therefore God requires us to actually manage it in such a way that we are able to be contributors and be kingdom financiers. You will see God's blessings. So I must, I will end there, my elder. Um, um, there's a lot that I wanted to say, but because of time. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, and I guess like uh, uh, people in the Bible who'd say uh, did our hearts been within ourselves when he spoke to us? Did our hearts Ben, and I'm sure all of us have got hearts that are bending. Thank you so much for such wisdom. I mean, uh, a workshop of this nature would have cost any of us some two, three thousand to attend, but there God has provided so freely. And the Bible then says, freely you have received and freely you must give. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for sharing your wisdom, for taking time. I see hands that are up. Before I take those hands, let me just share the comments that have come on the on the platform there. Uh, the comments are saying here yeah, um, budgeting just reflecting what you said budgeting is telling your money where to go than to think where your money went if you can keep a budget then you will not spend on what you do not have we buy things we don't need with the money we don't have to impress the people we do not like we don't like it or somebody asked for the LN, for the quotation from Ellen G. White it's Adventist home page 374 uh somebody says it's a pity that i'm taught or given this knowledge at this time it's not a pity it's never too late this is the time for us to start now here's a question um is a house acquired with a bond and asset is the house acquired with a bond and asset that's question number one question number two is there a spreadsheet that you can recommend or share which allows one to acquire their daily expenses and track spending against the monthly budget? Uh, those are the two that I see for now. Uh, and then I'll go to the hands that I raised when you've answered those two, my elder. Maybe let me, let me stop sharing. <clears throat> All right, thank you so much for those questions. I see also some on the comments there. Um, so the short answer for me, a uh, house acquired, especially if you are going to live in that house, <clears throat> uh, it's it is it is an it is an it is a liability. Okay. The reason I'm saying that is that if you stop paying that house, uh, you are unable to pay it, uh, the, the the bank is going to take it from you. So meaning that it's it's not you, it's not yours, sorry, it's not yours, it belongs to the bank. Uh, the minute you stop paying it they are going to come and repossess that house. For me, it is not an asset. It is a liability. Um, when it comes to spreadsheet, I can say that for me, I, I've created a, a spreadsheet. Um, uh, I can, I, I've created a spreadsheet on Excel. A simple thing that you list your, your, your expected expenditure on, on, on Excel. Um, and then you, that's what I've done. But I, I believe there are templates on Google that you can you can get that can help you to actually be able to do your budget. So there are available templates. There are actually budgeting apps uh, that you can also use um, in terms of uh, doing your budget. But I, I, I like to keep things simple. Um, I, I created just four columns, expected expenditure, and actual expenditure, expected income, actual income that I receive. Sometimes I'll get money that I was not expecting. 
So I'll put it as an actual expenditure, though it was not part of the expected. So I created that simple spreadsheet, not something complicated, so that it can I can easily understand what is happening. So I don't have a specific one, but I know on Google, if you search the templates there, um, and most of them actually will be American. So you have to um, adjust them so that they speak to your need. Thank, thank you, my elder. Um, thank you so much. I've got four hands that I raised there. My time is eight o'clock now. I'll start with uh, elder Lebokang Budibe, support some ISC, Shebu Mutao, Shebu Mutao, and Jabuli Lemalat. So, uh, elder Budibe. Hi, everyone. Um, firstly, let me start by saying, just making a comment. I just realized I've got a, an, an Excel budget from 2018. But I realized that having a budget is also not enough. Uh, a budget must also lead you towards a goal in terms of mm -hmm. managing your debt, uh, getting out of, out of debt, and setting up your goals. So that's one thing that I think my budget has been missing. Number two, uh, Elder Luzuko, I, I just want you to just explain the envelope system, right? I I I I, do, I, I didn't get it that 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 part of the of the thing. Then secondly. On your Excel sheet for the budget, I wish I could see how the receipts are are, are, are captured in the in the Excel. So you can I can be able to track how how do I record an an, an exp, expense that comes through a receipt. Thank you. Okay. Um, yes, you actually you are correct, my elder. That uh, budget is not I I what I I. You know, I'm currently writing a book, actually. I It's 90% complete, um, or completed. <laughs> it, it focuses on budgeting and financial plan. So the two, uh, I can say, tools, they go hand to hand. So the financial plan, it provides the goals that you want to achieve, where you write everything that you want to achieve. And then the budget, it helps you to achieve what is on the plans. So that, for example, in the in the financial plan, you have listed there that I want to get out of debt, okay? And what debt do I have? I have credit card. I have a loan, a student loan. How much may I, am I paying every month? Maybe 2000 there, 1500 Then you put that in the budget. So you are able to create some space, some room in your budget in order to be able to achieve. I agree that the budget is not enough without a plan. So hence, I think in my presentation, I talked about listing assets and liabilities. It's when you are creating that plan and also having some action plans. What I what do you want to achieve in a in a in a in a, in a like two years time, three years time, five years time. And then talking about the concept of envelope system. The envelope system is an old system actually. Uh, it's not a new thing. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's an old thing which I like <laughs> because you know when you're swiping, uh, you you don't even you don't even think you know. Uh, it's it's hard to 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 see money uh, leaving your wallet <laughs> when it is it is hard cash. Okay, I know people are saying we are moving to digital and all those things, but there are certain items where I'm able to withdraw. For example, I when it comes to the petrol, I, I swipe because I get points, you know, from the petrol station that I'm using. But when it comes to envelope system, I use it mostly for my grocery because it is easy to um to 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 to, be, to get out of, get out of control when it comes to because we consume, we like food. I like food, you know. So I need to regulate that. So that I know, for an example, I take four envelopes because there are four months, four weeks in a month. So there's week one, week two, week three, week four. So I write in week one, week two, week three, week four. And then I take the money, for example, if the if it's 4,000 grosser at home, I say 1,000 per week. But I have noticed that for the first week, we actually make a provision that it is greater, for an example, if it's, it's the first week because you know, end of the month, there's nothing. So you want to actually stock again. So sometimes I'll say 1.5 and then the other month is going to be lower than the first month. So what I do is that I will go to the first, first week envelope and go to the shop and buy for the week, all right? And then if it finishes, okay, then we say it's done, it's finished. Don't go to the second week. 
unless it's something serious that you need. All right. So that's what the envelope system in a nutshell. And some actually people I have digitized actually this envelope system, but I like the, the old, old system because it helps me when I go and take that money, take that hundred rands. Because most of the time when we go to buy grocery, let's say, let's say I go to town to buy bread. When I go with my card, I can easily go to shop and come up with a grocery worthy 5,500 5, rand. But if I have 10 rands taken from the envelope, I'll go buy that bread and nothing else. So I'm able to actually make able to make sure that at the end of the month, in that first, in that last week, I am able to buy nice things. You can even go to Woolies and buy a nice bag there because you are able to uh, manage your money. And then you touch on something about the receipt. So what I do practically is that, for example, today, I went to Cliques, I went to uh, Spa, I went to Woolies to buy some things. So I have my slips uh, that I did not put together with the ones that are here, which now I'm taking from my pocket. These are the ones that I've used today. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to my Excel, you know, and um, I'll go for an example <clears throat> where I bought um, something from Cliques. I think it was uh, yeah, medication for my child. So I'm go. I will go there where I have uh, put as an item for 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 for, for medicals, and then I will put this money. Okay, automatically because they are building formulas on Excel. It's gonna deduct, and it will show me how much is left now from that budget that I've allocated beginning of the month. Maybe let me say this: you don't budget after you have spent money. Before you get the income, you sit down and budget. Okay, you tell the money where to go instead of wondering where it went or instead of money telling you where to go. Okay. Uh, I don't know if I have covered you, my, my elder. Thing. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes, Lebo. Thank you. Isaac. Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, thank you so much. Just want to move for time's sake. Sipo. Oh, yes. Um, uh, thank you. Thank you, Mdala. Thank you, uh, Brother Muzuko. Such a powerful um, presentation. I, I I I want to come to um to this matter here, whereby when we look at our economy today, it's, it's not only South Africa that is affected as as um as we see people being poor and poorer, but it's uh it's um it's universal or what I can say is throughout the world. You know, you see people being homeless right in the United States and living in tents and and so forth. Now. The economic situation with high inflations and you know high prices of food and all that. What advice do you give to to a to a to a to an adventist that is working and they cannot even remit tax? As I as I as, as I noted, your first slide, the first point was giving, which is a very powerful statement because we get blessings from there, but because of being tied up in such an economy and such high inflations and interest rates and all that, what advice do you give to a person that works but they fail to remit? That is my question, right? Man, that is true. That is a fact. <clears throat> South Africa, we are, we, we, at the description of our economy, they say it's a stagflation. There is less growth, high inflation, high unemployment in the country. Prices of petrol are up, interest rates are high. So it's just things are high in our country. As a result, the purchasing power, purchasing the value of the money of the rent is going down like rapidly. As a result, people who they don't afford it, they don't afford everything that they bought last year with the income, even if it has actually increased by five percent, which is an increment. So it's a situation that we are at in the country, as you have mentioned, that actually across the world, this um the, the economic trajectory where inflation is, the inflation is high and that people are, are, are not keeping up. Actually, as, as, a, as, a, as a trained economist, I, I always say to people that even the interest, the, 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 the inflation that is reported, you know, uh, by, by Stats SA and um, the, um, yeah, it, it's not a true reflection of the in the household, um, household inflation. So that leads me to the point then, how do we then when at the macro level things are not going well so i believe in two economics these the two economies there's a macro economy and a micro economy which is household economy so i am of the view 
that even in crisis, families and uh, can be able to weather the storm uh, when there's an economic crisis at a national level. So how do you do that? For me, it's it boils down to some of the things that I have touched on the presentation, that as people, we need to actually be able to make adjustment, especially when it comes to um, the, the discretionary uh, spending and also the, the consuming things that we don't need. For example, you need to go back to your budget to say, I'm spending so much on entertainment. Uh, time, times are tough now. So how do I cut on my expenditure when it comes to uh, entertainment? So you must be able to look down into your, into your, into your bank statement to check to say, in the past three months, how, how, I was, how, how, how did I spend my money? So if you're able to build um, that, 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 that attitude to say, uh, I, want to, I want to create the system, I want to make sure that my money uh, goes where I want it to go, all right? Especially things that matter. So if you create a system at home, I am telling you, even if there is a crisis, high inflation, for an example, I must say in a practical level, that people when they, they were crying about high interest rate, high interest rate that were even than even now, they are higher than before COVID, okay? And 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 I, I always say to people, whenever the Reserve Bank is announcing that, okay, they're going to cut, repo rate, 300 basis point and all those things, or they're going to increase 50 basis point, I don't, it's not affecting me because I, I was able to manage, create, create systems at home so that whatever is happening at the macro level, unless there's a severe economic crisis, that thing shut down. But I am able to manage now, even if there is high inflation and interest rate in the country, creating system and actually know your priorities and don't spend beyond your income. And if you do that, you are able to create room as a family to give. So I always say that give, even if it's in crisis, you'll see God's blessing. Some of the things cannot be explained by, by cannot be understood or explained by, by, by human reasoning. Because, because I believe that finances are spiritual. So I always say, do give, you'll see God's blessing. Because God will bless you irrespective of the crisis. And for me, I don't take credit that I studied these things, I, I, I'm mastering budget, but I see the hand of God throughout. During COVID, I was fine. I was okay. I was not crying. I know we had a COVID-induced economic crisis at that time. But we, we were doing pretty much well because we created systems at home. So that's what I can say is that if people can change the mindset and also some behavioral um, um, uh, uh, issues, they can be able to weather the stem, storm when there's a crisis. That's, that's what I can say in a nutshell. But create systems, live beyond your mean, don't take too much debt. Um, if you are able to, to, to communicate with financial institutions, so that you can reduce the installment and pay a bit longer, so that you can actually be faithful to God. You'll see when you are faithful to God, you see what God will do in your life. I can I, I can tell you that that's what God has done in my life, and I attest that um, in, to many families who have tried to follow godly principles, irrespective of whether there is a severe economic crisis, then um, you'll see the improvement in your family. Thank that's you so much, my elder. Um, Jabulila, I see Shepu has gone out. Shepu has gone out. Uh, Jabulila. Uh, thank you. Thank you, my elder, for a powerful presentation. Mine is just I need an advice. Is it advisable uh, uh, to partake or to use the two-pot system? And what is the impact of it when I go on pension? Thank you. Okay, that's a good question. Very relevant one. As we know that the government has recently introduced this new uh, <clears throat> pension, uh, okay, the, the new regulation when it comes to pension effect, effective 1st of September 2024. So basically for many those who don't understand this thing. So now people are able to contribute to their pension and one third it goes to savings component and the other two third is go to a retirement component. So for an example, if you are contributing 3,000 a month towards your pension, 1,000 will go to savings component, 2,000 it goes to your uh, the, the, the retirement component or retirement pot. So what will happen is that 
Um, as of September, 1st of September, 2024, people now, when, when you have an emergency, they assume that you'll have an emergency. So instead of resigning from work so that you can actually access your pension, you are able now to access the savings component while you are preserving your pension until you retire. So initially, you were able to retire, resign from work and not even preserve that pension and take all of it and you are taxed by SARS, uh, the withdrawal uh, table is there so that you can actually be, you can give to SARS what it comes to SARS. So now you are able to save um, at the same time you build a pension. So as from now, you are not going to be able to touch that pension, that, that, that retirement component. So people who, from the 1st of September, the government from the old money that you are contributing, so they have actually made a provision, for an example, to, to, to start off with something in their savings component, so which is called a seed capital. So 10% of what you have saved, but it kept at 30,000. So that's what people are accessing now. Actually, two weeks ago, uh, as of, uh, I think two weeks ago, there were about 1.7 million application people wanted to access that, that savings component, sorry, that saving component, the seed capital. So. And to go into your question, my elder, is that if you are dipping into your savings component, obviously I've done some just brief calculation to say if your pension was going to be 3 million when you retire, let's say in 20 years time. So because you have been um, dipping into that savings component, your pension will be less than, it will be 1 million less, okay? Let me let me let me go. If 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 I factor in the growth component, you know, uh, in terms of the return that you get from the investment, uh, so when your pension is less, and at that time when you retire, food prices have escalated, have increased, and I always say to people that the the four million in thirty years time is equal to seven hundred thousand in today. Today's seven, sorry, it's equal to to, to seven hundred thousand of today. Meaning that what four million can buy in thirty years time, those things can be bought by seven hundred thousand today. So we talk about the issue of inflation that erodes the value of money. So when you are dipping into the savings component, not only you are reducing the face value of your pension. So. And, and, and double to that, compounded problem is that the inflation is going to catch up with you, less pension. As a result, people are actually living longer and up to 80. So if you retire at 55, you have close to 25 years um, to live with a pension. At 2 million, it's not enough in 20 years' time. So it's going to be finished within no time. And you are left actually with a with a situation where you depend on government and you become a burden to government i hope that economic lesson was simple and clear thank you so much uh, uh thank you so much uh, good evening let me be very quick uh am i audible yes 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 oh. Oh, okay. I just want to check uh, uh, with our presenter what is his take, uh, even. In, uh, trying to with regard uh, sectional titles where people are staying in complexes, uh, in estates, and uh, there's uh, levies which are increasing at alarming rate. And uh, at some point, you become responsible, you, you pay off your debt, and uh, your house is no more on bond. But actually, those levies, they don't stop. Uh, they keep on increasing. And for instance, uh, for your legacy, now you leave that house to your children. And uh, the first occupation of the children to that house mm -hmm. is they've got an obligation with the levies. I just want you to guide us. What is your t take with regard to that? Thank you. Yeah, that's that's an interesting one. Actually, I, I, I listened to one guy who was saying, actually, people are renting in their houses. <laughs> They're tenants. 
in their houses because I've seen some people on Facebook, they were crying, I think in Buffalo City in East London. They were posting the SMSs that they have to pay 7,000, uh, they have to pay 5,000, they have to pay this, this huge amount. And these are the things actually people don't think about when they go and then and, and actually take a bond. They 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 are excited when it's approved, but they don't think about such things. That okay, there is an increment in these um in these uh, what's the thing with the levies and the and the municipality fees, and and they don't they don't factor in their calculation. They look at the now to say oh some people actually they budget on the expected income. Okay, we're gonna get a raise. My notch is gonna increase. So coming to your to your question, it's it's a very interesting one and a very tricky one because um individually you need to assess the situation and if it's possible some people actually what they do and uh, they build flats at the back so that they can actually um uh, rent out those flats so that they it assists them with whatever they are paying to the municipality but you need to be careful because uh, these these days um, um you, you don't trust uh, anyone so what i can say if they keep on increasing it's 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 better that you 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 find ways of also if they are out, they are getting out of control find ways of moving maybe to a, a a more affordable area because I don't I believe that certain areas the levies are high so don't hold on and if it's not it's not it's not doing good for you uh, you can make that decision I know it's not easy. That you have been paying for this for so many years, uh, maybe you can actually sell it and get a, a good profit or capital gain from it, and then be able to buy another one which is much cheaper, and you invest the rest to the markets and it grows. And your your children can actually um, receive investments in two ways now, which is the property including the investment. So these are there are the many ways that you can actually deal with this issue of of levies if they are actually getting out of control. So that's 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 my take uh, on that. Uh well time is first running out. I'll read this one question and come back to see when I think we can close after that. Uh, I don't want to overstretch the people. Listen, the question here is um uh well, I've lost it now. Let me look for it. Who is this? It was asking about debt review. All right. Is it advisable for an Adventist to apply for debt review if budgeting can't work? Is it advisable? I think you can see the question on the, that comes from Paul and Hadi Mashiko. <laughs> it's interesting to say an Adventist. <laughs> 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 Ooh, yeah, it's a, it's a very interesting one, that one. Um, you know, I'm not a fan of these uh, debt, debt review and uh, debt consolidation. I'm not a fan. Why I'm saying that, I, I still behave. The issue is it's, it's, it's behavior. You know, if we can make sacrifices, and sometimes if we can let go of the same things that are putting us in the financial seat, financial pressure, we can be able to deal with our finances without um, a debt review, all right? Um, I, I know some people are like, no, 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 no. But, but have you calculated the costs, you know? The administration cost. So I, I think I, I I read somewhere an article where it was showing the initial cost of just uh, establishing the, the 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 establishing your can say let's say your account with them to deal with your debt and all those things. The amount that you pay there, you can be able actually to reduce your debt. Um, not not you know, it might not be that significant. But you can be able, for example, if you have a credit card of 10,000 that you're also unable to, 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 to tackle. Just on administration, administration fees, you can be able to pay that credit card and also create room to pay other debts. But I'm, I'm a big fan of lifestyle uh, changes and also making sacrifices in ensuring that you deal with your finances. If it's a car, let it go. Okay, it's temporarily. Um, so it's not like you're not gonna be working the rest of your life so instead of getting and be trapped in this um in this in this debt uh, review yeah. debt consolidation for many years so because the problem with that is that most people they 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 go back they go back after that period 
and 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 and, and acquire and sorry and and get more debt. They've not learned anything in that process. So you, you are not being taught on how to manage money. Uh, but if you can start learning how to manage money and make sacrifices, for me, that's the best one. So even after paying your debt, after four years, I'm telling you, you'll be a better person. But with these processes, I, I'm not a fan, to be honest. Yes, I'm not saying people must not go there, but I'm not a fan. Can you try, uh, before you go, can you try, draw a budget and see where you can cut off? Don't go and don't spend too much. Ellen White says, actually, if you are, if you, if you are, in too much debt, if it, it 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 means that you must eat bread, eat bread and butter so that you can get out of debt. So we've made a lot of sacrifices where we are so conservative when it comes to our uh, grocery uh, budget item in, 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 in our family. But now we are kind of liberal, you know, <laughs> because it was just temporarily. So instead of saying, oh, let's go debt consolidation and debt review because we are overwhelmed, but let's make some lifestyle sacrifices. And then we are able to navigate our financial situation. And now I've learned so much principle that I'm here now presenting to you today. Thank you. And stop buying expensive suits. Buy those K thousand ones for five hundred bucks. Thank you, my elder. Sipo, yeah. quick question. Close. <laughs> okay. Um. It's Nick. Right. How I wanted to find out. Um. How do you manage your finances and still save? when you are only starting to work sir okay how do you manage your finances and save when you are starting to work yes i think that's the best time um that's the best time because um when you are starting to work um especially if you're a young person you have not seen a lot of things and the, the pressure that is in the workplace I think the best thing for me is to invest in the knowledge about finances, okay? Because what I've discovered, for example, in my case as a young person, when I started working in Tobe, um, so, you know, from the Eastern Cape in the villages and you start seeing you people in Tobe, you know, I know you, I was there. And you see nice cars driving on M1 and you're like, wow, you know? So I, I was starting working. So what I did not do well at that time when I was in Jobek, I was excited with the life and the fast pace in Jobek. So I, I wanted to fit in. So I think that's the biggest mistake that most young people are actually um, are getting into. It's to be excited and be pressured by their surroundings. So if people actually can understand to say, <clears throat> to say they need to live their lives and to the fullest and ensure that their money at each and every month it's able to it's, it must each and every month it must sustain them so and not be pressured by the surroundings so that's the best way because if you get that pressure you forget about savings you forget about investment the only thing about the only thing you think about it's the nice clothes so that you can actually be seen and be known that you are actually putting this particular brand so if people and actually those who are starting working if from the word go let me tell you a typical example i have a younger brother he started working this year in Jobek, <laughs> funny enough. So when he started to actually opening his bank account with Capitec without advertising, um, I, I sat down with him. He was doing grade 12 before he went to VES actually to study uh, his degree. And he completed his degree and he's working, doing honors now. And he was telling me today that, Woody, I am saving more than 6,000. I was like, wow, young man. I know that I, I wish I did what he did. And, and he's doing so well, he doesn't have debt. And I did not want him to fall into the trap that I, was, I, I fell into. And I was not selfish to say, I want him to actually see and sink into the debt. So now he's able to save. I know, I see he's buying things cash. He will tell people to that, I saw this table and I'm, I started table. He's buying things cash, buying things cash, cash. He started working this year. This is his first year of working fresh on facet, but with the mindset. And I told him about investment platforms and, you know, he would call me, put it, I, I, can I buy this capital, this, this share? And, and is it the right time to buy? Is it So because I am, I'm planting into him to say, listen, um, it's good to wait. So what I can say is that um, if you invest, I liked his attitude because he invested in knowing where to invest and, and all those things. So it's, it's, that's, that's the best way. Start with the budget. All right, that's what he did. We, I, I'll call him. We talk about budget. Talk about 
investment. And I think he's on the right track. He's doing far much better than I did when I started working. Thank you so much, my elder. It's 29 past eight now. Um, my announcements now, and then I'll hand over to Pastor Pani for his closing remarks and um, to pray for us. Uh, all presentations will be sent to participants through your local church, uh, TOC email address, and on WhatsApp. All recordings, again, will come to you in like manner. We start at 7 a.m. sharp, so if you can log in at about five minutes to seven, there'll be music playing. So be ready on time with a notepad and uh, a pen. Uh, please, uh, all participants who participated in uh, Master Steward Level 2 must send their signed checklist so it can be updated with the office. Thank you. Thank you so much, Elder Mkwebo. Thank you so much for the wisdom, for the love, for what you've shared with us. Um, he who does not read has no advantage over the man who cannot read, said Mark Twain. And Jesus says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Maybe, Elder, if you could type the books you have written on the platform, and maybe tell us how we can get your books before you exit, before I hand over to the pastor. Okay, um, I, I can do that, but they are not available now. They are not in print, so... Um... It's fine. Uh, just, uh, my elder, thank you so much. Uh, just as you send the presentation tomorrow, on your last slide, you can include any of the books that you recommend for people to read and the ones that you've written and the ones that you're going to be writing and then how we'll be able to access them. Um, due to time, we do not have many announcements. Announcements were made and many comments. I would just ask us to close in prayer. Let's just close as we pray. Thank you, Lord, for the day you've given us. Thank you for the session that you've had. May you build our finances, Lord. May we know, Lord, that you provide you're able to guide and you're able to give the discipline. Bless each and every church member, Lord, and every member that has joined us on this platform, Lord. Allow them to not only learn these lessons, but to implement them in their lives and for them, Lord, to grow wealthier and more prosperous, Lord. That's what we aim and pray for, Lord, for each and every one of them. Bless them, Lord, financially. Allow them to save. Allow them, Lord, to those who are stuck in debt to be able to go out of debt. In Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Hundis. Thank you, everybody, and good night. See you tomorrow then.